students i am bina gidwani i will be discussing about one of the interesting and learning episodes of b pharma on the important unit of electromagnetic radiations part 2 the absorption of energy by atoms and molecules the emission of radiant energy by atoms and molecules refraction and diffraction which is one of the very important units of the section of pharmaceutical analysis 3 of b pharm 7th sem Let's start our episode while taking a look at what we are going to learn today. Module one: absorption of energy by atoms and molecules. Module two: emission of radiant energy by atoms and molecules. Module three: refraction and diffraction. Module four: conclusion. Let's start the first module with introduction about absorption of energy. Absorption is the process by which radiant energy is absorbed and converted into other forms of energy. Absorption occurs when energy of the same frequency as the resonant frequency of an atom or molecule is absorbed, producing an excited state. If instead of re-radiating a photon of the same wavelength, the energy is transformed into heat motion and is re-radiated at a longer wavelength absorption occurs dear students let us now study the process of absorption in detail suppose that electromagnetic radiation of a given frequency strikes a hydrogen atom and that the frequency is such that the energy of the radiation equals the difference in the energy of the ground and first excited levels of the atom then an electron in the ground level may be raised to the first excited level this process is called absorption because the atom has a unique set of energy levels each will absorb radiation over a particular set of wavelengths the pattern of wavelengths absorbed is called the absorption spectrum of the atom or molecule the radiation has vanished been absorbed but the total energy of the radiation and the atom energy is conserved the atom now has more energy than it did an absorption band is a range of wavelengths or frequencies in the electromagnetic spectrum within which radiant energy is absorbed by substance such as water carbon dioxide oxygen ozone and nitrous oxide Figure one shows the absorption stages from ground state to excited state. In absorption, energy is taken in from specific wavelengths. The absorption spectrum shows all wavelengths except those absorbed. Absorption is a process in which matter species can capture electromagnetic radiation and convert the energy into internal energy. Due to this, the species get transformed from ground state to one or more higher energy state. for absorption to occur the energy of the exciting photon must exactly match the energy differences between the ground state and one of the excited state of the absorbing species since the energy levels of matter are quantized only light of energy that can cause transitions from one level to another will be absorbed the different transitions produce absorption spectrums of the discrete lines The type of excitation or transition depends on the wavelength of the light. UV or visible light promote electrons to higher orbitals. Infrared light promotes vibrations. Radio waves promotes reorientation of nuclear spin. X-ray promotes ejection of electrons. Absorption spectrum. It is the absorption of light as a function of wavelength. spectrum of an atom or molecule depend on its energy level structure thus useful for identifying compounds absorption spectra vary widely in appearance atomic absorption when a polychromatic radiation uv or visible pass through a sample containing monoatomic particles with gaseous mercury or sodium it results in the absorption of a well defined frequencies wavelengths relative simplicity of spectra is due to small number of possible energy states only electronic state for the absorbing species atoms for example sodium vapors exhibit two sharp absorption peaks 589 and 589.6 nanometer 
due to excitation of 3s electron to 2,3p orbital. Molecular absorption. Molecules have multiple atoms which can vibrate and rotate in relation to each other. Each kind of vibration or rotation gives different energy state. Many closely spaced energy transitions mean that instead of absorbing exact frequencies of light, molecules absorb group of frequencies. Absorption spectra of molecules are more complex than atomic spectra because the number of energy states of molecule is enormous. Energy E associated with the bands of a molecule is made up of three components. E is equal to E electronic plus E vibrational plus E rotational. E electronic is the energy associated with bonding electrons. E vibrational is the energy associated with interatomic vibrations in molecule. E rotational is the energy associated with various rotational motions within a molecule. For each electronic energy state of molecule, several possible vibrational state exist and for each to these vibrational state, numerous rotational states are possible. Thus, molecular absorption spectra are characterized by regions of substantial wavelength range and is complex. Absorption induced by a magnetic field. When a molecule is placed in a strong magnetic field, additional quantized energy levels are observed due to the magnetic properties of their particles. Differences in the energy between the induced state are small and transitions between the states are brought about only by absorption of long wavelength radiation with nuclei. Radio wave lambda is equal to 10 to the power 3 to 60 centimeter are involved. For electron microwaves lambda is equal to 3 centimeter are involved. Methods of absorption. Quantitative absorption methods require two intensity measurement. Before a radiation beam passed through the sample P0 and other after P. Figure 4 shows a beam of radiation before and after it has passed through a medium that has a thickness of B centimeter and a concentration C of absorbing species. Due interaction between the photon and absorbing species, the intensity of the beam is attenuated from P0 to P. Transmittance T of the medium is the fraction of the incident radiation transmitted by the medium. T is equal to P divided by P0. Absorbance A of a medium is defined as A is equal to minus log of base 10 T is equal to log of P0 by P. Absorbance of a medium increases as attenuation of the beam becomes greater. We will now proceed toward another module dealing with emission of energy by atoms and molecules. Emission is a process where the energy is released at specific wavelengths. An electron falls from a higher energy state to a lower one. A photon with the exact energy difference between the levels is released. Each atom has characteristic energy level transitions which create an atomic spectrum. Emission spectrum only shows wavelengths emitted. Radiation is emitted when excited species, atoms, ions or molecules relax to lower energy levels by giving up their excess energy as photons. Figure 5 and 6. Emission spectra. A plot of intensity of emitted radiation as a function of wavelength. There are three types of emission spectra. Line emission spectra. It is produced when the radiating species are individual atomic particles that are well separated in a gas phase. If the atom is being given energy by some means such as radiation or collision with other particles, it emits electromagnetic radiation at wavelengths governed by the difference in these energy levels. This kind of radiation is called line emission because when the individual wavelengths are measured with an instrument called a spectrograph, the results shows up as lines on a photographic plate. 
band emission spectra these are encountered in sources when gaseous radicals or small molecules are present continuous emission spectra are encountered when large molecules are present in the source when the density of atoms in a given area is sufficiently high the radiation that ultimately leaves the area is smeared into a continuous distribution of wavelengths made up of the many separate wavelengths that the individual atoms emit this is called continuous emission the radiation we receive from the sun is continuous radiation students after studying module 1 and 2 you might have clear idea about absorption and emission of energy by atoms and molecules in previous module of electromagnetic radiation part 1 we had studied about wave and particle nature of light the wave nature of light leads to two very important properties refraction where the direction of light propagation is altered at the boundary between media of different densities and diffraction which has among its consequences that light can bend around corners a general question arises that where do waves move from one medium to another sound from cold air to warm air light from space to air light from air to water when water passes from deep water to shallow water the wavelength shortens when wave moves from one medium to another two things happen the wave velocity changes the wave direction changes oblique waves bend towards the normal when entering slower medium and bends away from the normal when entering faster medium refraction refraction is the bending of a wave when it enters a medium where its speed is different the refraction of light when it passes from a fast medium to a slow medium bends the light ray towards the normal to the boundary between the two media the amount of bending depends on the indices of refraction of the two media and is described quantitatively by snell's law refraction is the change in direction of waves that occurs when waves travel from one medium to another refraction is always accompanied by wavelength and speed change diffraction is the bending of waves around obstacles and openings law of refraction snell's law when light travels between two media it changes direction as it passes into the second medium the slower the speed in the second medium the smaller the angle of refraction n1 sin angle 1 is equal to n2 sin angle 2 where n1 is refractive index for medium 1 and n2 is refractive index for medium 2 the snell's law gives the relation between the angle of incidence theta 1 the angle of refraction theta 2 the refraction index of the glass slab n2 and the surrounding medium n1 n1 sin theta 1 is equal to n2 sin theta 2 usually the index of refraction is given relative to the surrounding medium and we get the expression sin alpha by sin beta is equal to n where alpha is the angle of incidence and beta is the angle of refraction many materials have a well characteristic refractive index but these indices depend strongly upon the wavelength of light therefore any numeric value for the index is meaningless unless the associated wavelength is specified table shows the refractive index of some materials dear students now we will study about diffraction waves spread as they travel when waves encounter an obstacle they bend around it and pass into the region beyond the requirement for the diffraction is that the size of the opening in the barrier is approximately the wavelength of the wave being diffracted in simple words diffraction is bending of waves around obstacles diffraction is the bending of waves as they pass by some objects 
or through an aperture. The phenomenon of diffraction can be understood using Huygens principle, which states that every unobstructed point on a wave front will act as source of secondary spherical wave. The new wave front is the surface tangent to all the secondary spherical waves. According to Huygens principle, light waves incident on two slits will spread out and exhibit an interference pattern in the region beyond. Figure 8. The pattern is called a diffraction pattern. On the other hand, if no bending occurs and the light wave continues to travel in straight lines, then no diffraction pattern would be observed. When light passes through a sharp edge, it does not produce a sharp shadow. Also, when it passes through a circular hole, it does not produce a disk of the same size. Under the right conditions, it produces not only a larger spot but also rings. Furthermore, the transverse size of a laser beam expands as it propagates. These observations are elegantly described by diffraction theory. Diffraction mainly falls into two classes, Fraunhofer and Fresnel. Fraunhofer diffractions describe what happens when the phase fronts are near plane waves where the curvature of the field can be ignored. Fresnel diffraction takes curvature into account. The connection between waves and diffraction is much more noticeable for sound than it is for light. The observations that sound easily travels around corners is strongly evidence for the wave nature of sound. Fraunhofer conditions can be achieved in practice by using two lenses. The first lens ensures that the wave fronts arriving at the aperture will be plane with parallel rays and the second lens brings beam of diffracted lights together to form an interference pattern on the screen. In Fraunhofer diffraction, all the light rays that emerge from the slit are approximately parallel to each other. For a diffraction pattern to appear on the screen, a convex lens is played between the slit and screen to provide convergence of the light rays. According to the wave theory, the fringes are formed by the diffraction or bending of light wave around the edges of object and the subsequent interference of the diffracted waves. Single slit diffraction let a source of monochromatic light be incident on a slit of finite width A. In diffraction of Fraunhofer type, all rays passing through the slit are approximately parallel. In addition, each portion of the slit will act as source of light wave according to the Huygens principle. For simplicity, we divide the slit into two halves. At the first minimum, each ray from the upper half will be exactly 180 out of phase with a corresponding ray from the lower half. The condition for minima of a single slit diffraction becomes the double slit interference when the width of single slit A is replaced by the separation between the two slits D. The reason is that in the double slit case, the slits are taken to be so small that each one is considered as the single light source and the interference of waves originating within the same slit can be neglected. On the other hand, the minimum condition for the single slit diffraction is obtained precisely by taking into consideration the interference of waves that originate within the same slit. The simplest case of Fraunhofer diffraction is that for a long narrow slit in an opaque screen. The interference pattern consists of a set of light and dark parallel fringes. A plot of the intensity of the light against position on the screen is shown in figure 12. The angle between the central peak and the first minimum m is equal to 1 is given by sin theta is equal to lambda a. So, the widest diffraction patterns are produced by the narrowest slits. If the slit is only one wavelength wide, the angular position of the first minimum would be 90 degree, giving an angular separation of 180 degree 
between the zero intensity positions. So, the diffracted light spreads out in all directions. On the other hand, if the slit is wide, the angle of the first minimum is small and diffraction effects may be hard to see. The principal maximum is roughly twice the width of the secondary maxima. The intensities of the secondary maxima are very much less than the intensity of the principal maxima. Diffraction by a circular aperture. In practice, the most important example of diffraction produced by single aperture is that for a circular hole, most optical instruments have circular aperture or lenses that act as circular apertures and give the diffraction effects. For Fraunhofer diffraction at a circular hole, the plot of intensity against position on the screen, figure 13, is similar in its general shape to that for a single rectangular slit. However, it differs from the single slit patterns in the following ways. The diffraction pattern is a circular path of light called the airy disk surrounded by rings of light. The angle between the principal maximum and the first minimum is about 20% greater than that for a slit of the same width. Sin theta is equal to 1.22 lambda by A. The spacings between adjacent minima are not uniform as those for the slit. The intensities of the secondary maxima are smaller. Diffraction gratings. The diffraction grating is an optically reflecting surface with a large number of parallel grooves. The diffraction grating disperses the radiation and a second mirror focuses the radiation onto a planar surface containing an exit slit. Interference is the combination of two or more waves to form a composite wave based on the superposition principle, figure 14. A diffraction grating is a series of a large number n of slit with a very small spacing d between them. If a source emits light that consists of various different wavelengths, a diffraction grating provides an extremely simple method for determining what these wavelengths are. The sharpening of the fringes is exploited in the diffraction grating, a device which consists of a very large number of narrow, uniformly spaced parallel slits, typically 1200 slits per millimeter. There are two kinds of grating. A transmission grating is made by cutting grooves in a material such as glass. The grooves are effectively opaque strips and the unruled portions are the slits. A reflection grating works by reflecting light from many parallel mirror-like strips. Since the fringe spacing depends on wavelength and because the bright fringe are very sharply defined, the diffraction grating can be used in a spectroscope or spectrograph to spread a beam of light into components with different frequencies. The grating is far superior to the prism because it can be made to give a much greater angular separation of the spectrum. If the slit separation is very small, say 10 to the power minus 6 meter, and if there are many slits, say 10 to the power 6, then a line spectrum will have a very sharp, clearly separated interference maxima. Here we came to an end of this unit which deals with the study of electromagnetic radiations. Electromagnetic radiations and spectrum are the essential and basic aspects for dealing with spectroscopic studies. In this module, we had studied in detail about the absorption and emission of energy by atoms and molecules. The basic difference between refraction and diffraction is explained with diagram. Diffraction is related to interferences and intensity. Students, through this module, we have learned about the types and methods of absorption, emission, refraction and diffraction. Mm -hmm.